For many of you, your mountain bike is the love of your life. Even if it put you in the toilet financially or caused you injury, it's also given you freedom, confidence, and joy. So you want to tend to and pamper your mountain bike, but you have no money left to do so. I've got you covered today. We're going to look at a whole bunch of inexpensive things you can do to your bike to make it work better, look better, and last longer. The stuff in today's video is so cheap that tires don't even make the cut. Let's get started. If color coordination is important to you, plastic valve caps are the cheapest way to do it hands down. These are available in an absurd amount of colors, and I could just eat them. In another video, I tried aluminum caps, but they do get kind of crusty over time. This doesn't happen to plastic, and they're available in way more color options. Of course, you can only expect to get tops of 5% performance gain from installing these on your bike. If you run flat pedals and ride hard, these pins will eventually become unrecognizable. Replacing them with new stainless steel pins will restore your pedals to their original glory. If you can get the old ones out. I've used everything from vice grips to screw extractors to get the job done. And the whole process is an oddly satisfying endeavor. Most popular pedals seem to take this exact pin, but I've included a link to a variety of them below. At the end of your shift cable housing is an end cap, and these can actually be upgraded with anti-kink end caps from Jaguar. Just like the extension cord on a vacuum cleaner, they provide support a little ways up the housing to prevent kinks. As long as you know how to adjust your derailleur, these are pretty easy to install, and they add a bit of longevity to an otherwise vulnerable part. So, you adjusted the sag on your suspension and your bike is riding smoothly. But when you hit a big drop, it bottoms out. Don't add air, add progression. We covered this in detail in another video which I've linked below, but in short, Reducing your fork's air volume with these little spacers will make it more supportive as it sinks deeper into its travel. Volume reducers don't cost much and they're very easy to install. On this RockShox Pluto, all I have to do is remove the air cap and add them as needed. As far as cheap upgrades go, this is one of the biggest if you're an aggressive rider. Something like an MRP ramp control cartridge accomplishes the same effect, but it's not even in the same universe in terms of cost. If you remove your front wheel often, you appreciate the convenience of a quick release through axle. If not, you don't need it. These stealth axles are much better. They're simpler, lighter, lower profile, better looking, and in many cases, more secure. If your front wheel stays on most of the time, this is a no-brainer. Just make sure you do a little Googling to get the right one for your fork, and keep a multi-tool on hand in case you do need to remove your front wheel. If your bike has these little threads under the bottom bracket, you can easily install a bash guard. This Zippo Lite Taco Bash is the most expensive thing in this video, at $45, and it includes a spare. Installing a bash guard is not rocket science, and it provides clear benefits, absorbing impacts from below that would otherwise damage your chainring. Even if you don't have these bolt holes, you can still install a bash guard around your chainring for even cheaper. If you wash your bike, which you probably should, you'll need to re-lubricate your drivetrain. Dry lube is the way to go. This particular stuff is Teflon based. You spray it on, cycle your drivetrain, and it gets into all the nooks and crannies. The liquid part will dry up, leaving a slippery Teflon residue behind. But why is this better than chain oil? I'm marking these two lengths of chain. The green one is coated in dry lube while this pink one is coated in chain oil. Now to mine some dry dirt off the back of the murder machine. It's pretty easy to see that the chain coated in dry lube collected less dirt. I've been having great success with this stuff, but any dry lube will keep your drivetrain cleaner than chain oil. Just be sure to keep it far away from your rotors. Speaking of chains, they are one of the cheapest things you can replace on your drivetrain, and doing so will often increase its longevity. 
Just count the gears in your cassette and that's what kind of chain you need. 8 speed, 9 speed, 10 speed, etc. It's really that easy. A good 11 speed chain is around 25 bucks. And even a really fancy gold chain like this one is 60. Most mountain bikes these days come tubeless ready, which means you can remove your inner tubes and run lower tire pressure. The parts you'll need are not expensive. Just buy tubeless sealant and valve stems. Most tubeless ready rims come with this tape already on them, but if not, you can buy it or just use Gorilla Tape. The process basically involves unseating the tire, installing the valve stem, pouring in the sealant, closing everything back up, and pumping up the tire. I'll spare you the details and leave some resources below in case you want to do this. Brake pads come in many varieties, and they're optimized for different uses. For instance, high speed pads work best when they heat up, while comfort pads work optimally right away, but fade in performance if they get too hot. Upgrading your brake pads is not expensive in the least, and very easy to do. New brake pads need to be bedded in before use, and we covered that in another video as well. Right now it's too rainy to bed my brake pads outside, so let's see if we can figure out a way to do it indoors. Maybe just watch my other video and do it the normal way. If you have a 2x or 3x drivetrain, it means you have shifting up at the front of your bike as well. While this does provide a lot of range and gearing options, it's also more complex. I actually snapped a chain right here because it got tangled up in my wheel, and I'm not surprised. If you're okay with losing a bit of range, you can convert it to a 1x. This involves removing all your front chain rings, a length of chain, your front derailleur, shift cable, and shifter. In their place, this relatively inexpensive single speed chain ring. Since single speed chain rings don't need to shift, their teeth can be optimized to hold the chain on. And performing such a conversion can improve reliability, make your bike quieter, increase ground clearance, reduce cockpit clutter, and reduce the weight of your bike by a whole pound. Of course, in my case, I installed a larger 11-speed cassette and box one derailleur, but that's going to be out of reach for this video. I hope you found some of these upgrades useful or at the very least entertaining. Do check out the links and resources in the description, as well as my previous cheap upgrades video that I made back in 2016. Now at any budget, you can improve your bike's performance, increase its longevity, or at least give yourself the illusion that you're doing so. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.